hymns today chosen by our prefects. Thank you very much indeed, boys. Thank you also to everyone who's joined us throughout the term. This is our last Sunday service of the term. Uh, we have our leavers service on Wednesday. Um, it's been a pleasure to, to touch base with you, I suppose, on a, on a weekly basis. And we really hope to see you all back here in person um, as we move through to September. As for this morning here, may I ask you please to stand. Our first hymn chosen by the boys is 362, Tell Out My Soul. <laughs> Blessed is the Lord, for he has heard the voice of our prayer. 
Blessed are you, Lord our God, Creator and Redeemer of all. To you be glory and praise for ever. May Christ, your light, ever dawn in our hearts, as we offer you our sacrifice of thanks and praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Thank you if you'd like to sit, and Lottie is going to give us our first reading. Verse 25 to 37. On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit in eternal life? What is written in the law, he replied. How do you read it? He answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind. And love your neighbour as yourself. You have answered correctly, Jesus replied. Do this and you will live. But the lawyer wanted to justify himself, so he asked Jesus, And who is my neighbour? In reply, Jesus said, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So too a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him pass by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he travelled, came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. Which of these three do you think was a neighbour to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? The expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. Jesus told him, Go and do likewise. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Lottie. Now, our second hymn, no anthem this morning, an extra hymn chosen by the boys and a very obvious choice for the boys. Number 513, Shine, Jesus, Shine. Stand.
driving home. I hope you enjoyed that. It's not quite the same here with just two of us. We could do with you back. Uh, do please take a seat. Not if you deliver our second reading, please. himself 
made the decision to avoid, to avoid the injured man or to help him. It was their own choices, not put upon him by his faith or his peers, just himself. And following the same theme, it's important that we identify that it's us as individuals who decide what sort of person we are and how we will be judged by others. And this, in turn, is down to the decisions that we make. The decisions we make during every minute of every day. Decisions which range from the inconsequential to life-changing. And we've already made hundreds of decisions today, ranging from what clothes to wear and what to have for breakfast, through to what activities to do or whether or not um, you need to polish your shoes before chapel, even if no one will notice them. And there are many different levels of decision making. Decisions that can be made on the spur of the moment, whether to use a tissue or a hanky, and hopefully not your sleeve if you sneeze. Whether you want to go running or swimming in your free time, whether you enjoy maths or science, whether you will eat a spoonful of sugar or a spoonful of honey. Little decisions. And then there are those mid-level decisions. Would you rather, maybe these, these take a little thought, would you rather do school exams or go to the dentist for a filling? Would you rather miss Christmas or miss your birthday? What should I buy Mrs. Morse for her birthday? Now that could actually be a life-changing decision if I get it wrong. Maybe that's in the wrong category. And major decisions. Decisions that require a great deal of forethought, discussion and a final judgement. Like, where might you go to school next? Should we be blood donors? When you're offered a job, whether you take it or not. Now I'd like to spend a moment or two talking to you about decisions that fall in that mid-ground. Not in themselves, obviously life-changing, but not in any way insignificant. Decisions that often need to be made quickly, but can have far-reaching consequences. Let's start, for example, for the boys in Form 4, for any who are tuning in, who now have their common entrance exams less than a year, 32 school weeks away. Now that is a sober thought. And perhaps when they find themselves with a little time over the summer, They'll have a decision about whether they should go and sit in front of the TV or go out and play, or whether they should go and do some work. Let's take a couple of really extreme examples. I'm not suggesting these are the truth. But if there's no work, and that continues, then there'll be poor results, and maybe a failure at CE, and then not the school you want to go for. So maybe that leads to poor GCSEs and failed A, failed A levels, not to university, and out of work or maybe not in the job you hoped for. Unlikely, I think. How about if you look at the other side of it? You do get down and work, and you get great results, in fact, better than expected, and you go on to your next school feeling massively confident, and you get great GCSE and A-level grades, and universities, and degrees, and top jobs, and if you want it, fame and fortune. Now, it's never that straightforward, of course not. But there are decisions that we make here and now that, whether we realise it or not, affect our future and those of the futures of those around us. But more realistically, and I talk to the boys in particular here, how do we react to the following? Bullying in the playground, name calling. Do you say something about it? Do you report it to a member of staff? Do you do something about it? Or do you walk away? If you found a £10 note in the playground, would you keep it or hand it in to Mr Southall? If you were out in town and you saw your friend stealing, would you report it? Or would you say nothing about it? Or would you talk to your friend? How about if you're running late for school and you're, or work, to some of the adults here, and you pass a lady in distress who needs some help carrying heavy bags? She's heading to the bus stop down the road. You know you're getting in trouble for being late if you stop and help. Do you apologise, carry on running? Or do you go and help her and deal with the fallout at school or at work? And what about when you're tempted to do something? Tempted to do something and you know you shouldn't. Remember our sermon from a couple of weeks ago on temptation. Now there are just too many decisions to measure and we face them on a daily basis and throughout our lives. And in some cases we can seek assistance. Asking people you trust, 
doing your research, these things definitely make the decision easier. But sometimes, I think it's warming up in here, um, but sometimes you have to make that split second decision. It has to be yourself and your conscience. And you know what? You are all good people. You know what is right, you know what is wrong. It's the ability to listen to our conscience and to do what we know is right, even when everything else points in the other direction. That's what makes for a good person. And it's imperative we forge our own way in life, and we don't let ourselves be dragged along by peer pressure. Stand up for what we believe in. Sometimes we've got to disagree with our friends and our colleagues and trust our conscience. Take the route that we know is right, not the one that is easy. Abraham Lincoln, who you all know is the 16th president of the US, once said, I am not bound to win, but I am bound to be true. I am not bound to succeed, but I am bound to live by the light that I have. I must stand with anybody that stands right, and stand with him while he is right, and part with him when he is wrong. I will leave you with this sermon today, in the words of Robert Frost, famous American poet, uh, taken from the early 20th century poem, The Road Not Taken. After all, decisions are nothing more than junctions where we have to decide which way to turn. Do we turn to tell the truth or to be deceitful? Do we step in or do we walk away? Are we brave or do we take the easy option? Do we ignore the, the needs of others? Or, like the Samaritan, do we go into their end? Two roads diverged in a yellow wood, and sorry I could not travel both and be one traveller long I stood and looked down one as far as I could to where it bent in the underworld. And then took the other just as fair and having perhaps the better claim because it was grassy and wanted wear, though as for that, the passing there had worn them both about the same. And both that morning equally lay, in leaves no step had trodden black. No, I kept the first for another day. Yet knowing how way leads on to way, I doubted if I should ever come back. I shall be telling this with a sign, somewhere ages and ages hence. Two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less travelled by, and that has made all the difference. Thank you. Would you please stand for the creed? Let us say to her, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. May I ask you now please to kneel or bow your head for our prayers. Let us pray for the church and the world and let us thank God for his goodness. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you promised through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear us when we pray in faith. We thank you for the Christians who inspire us and help us to understand what God wants of us. We thank you especially for those who give their lives to serving God we ask that you will give them courage, wisdom and patience in all that they say and do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray today for those places around the world that are ravaged by racism, violence and greed. We pray that peace and friendship will conquer hostility and that you will guide the peacemakers on the road to solution. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. We pray for those who are grieving, sick or suffering, both in our local communities and in the wider world at this time when the coronavirus continues to affect how we live and work. In a moment of silence, we remember those known to us. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear us as we remember those who have died in the faith of Christ. According to your promises, grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all your saints, we commend ourselves and all Christian people to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty God, you have broken the tyranny of sin and have sent the Spirit of your Son into our hearts, whereby we call you Father. Give us grace to dedicate our freedom to your service, that we in all creation may be brought to the glorious liberty of the children of God. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We join together in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, if you'd like to stand for our final hymn today, number 355, I Vow to Be My Country.
Pedro, Pablo, por lo que decir para allá. Dear Lord, give us more charity, more self-denial, more likeness to thee. Teach us to sacrifice our comforts for the sake of doing good. Make us kindly in thought, gentle in word, and generous in the deed. Teach us that it is better to give than receive, better to forget ourselves than to put ourselves forward, better to minister than to be ministered unto. And unto thee, the God of love, be glory and praise, both now and forevermore. Amen. Let us bring our morning worship to a close by joining in the words of the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore.